Excellent choice, Kevin. How much you want to go for this time? Let's do five. Five kilograms. We try 8,000, Kevin. All right, let's do 10. 10. You want to do that? Excellent choice. Kevin, let me lock in. Those mushrooms. Get back to you in a few <laughs> minutes with an exact confirmation, Kevin. Right. And welcome to... Oyster mushrooms. Thanks, man. I'm going to have a beer. <laughs> this is fun. Take it easy, Kev. This is a bag of spent pink oyster mushroom substrate. Now, I've grown maybe two flushes. I usually do two, sometimes three flushes um, off my pink blocks. Um, and then they're out of the room. Now, I read... I'm pretty sure I read in this book here, which is um, Paul Stamets' Growing Mushroom book. It's quite a big thing. Um, that you can reuse substrate between different mushroom species. And the next species you use will have to pull a more energy off that substrate. So I'm going to put it to the test. Now, I tried looking through this book to find just where it was written again. I'm not 100% positive it was written in here. I just thought it was. Um, if you do have this book and you can find where it's written, please... Um, Comment below and I'll uh, pin that post. Um, I tried finding the passage and I couldn't uh, find it again. Um, perhaps I didn't look hard enough. But we have some spent blocks which were pink oyster. Here's one, here's two. Now what I'm going to do is smash these blocks up, um, put some more water with them, sterilize them again and put a phoenix oyster mushroom species on there and see if we can get a flush of phoenix oyster off it. So it's had pink oyster first, it's going to have Phoenix Oyster second. Now I'm not going to add anything else with this, I'm just going to simply add more water. Smash this up, put it in a new unicorn bag and add more water. These have been sitting outside for quite a while, so they've actually got a bit of moisture in the bottom. They're a little bit yuck but that's okay, they will be sterilised. So you can see in the middle there, that's all very, very dry. This block has been sitting outside for probably a few weeks now, so it will have dried out under the um, hot, dry conditions. It's been uh, maybe an average of 22, with highs of upwards of 30s each day. So what I'm doing here is just breaking these chunks of mycelium, soy hull, and pine wood pellets back down. And we'll get these nice, and fine. That's looking close enough. So we're going to get that now into a unicorn grow bag. So here they are here. Now I just weighed each of these and these weigh three kilos each. This is a fresh bag I've made with pine pellets and soy hulls. This weighs 4.8 kilo. So these are currently down about 1.8 kilos on this block here. And they certainly feel like it, they feel very light. So we need to add some more moisture to rehydrate these. Now we're not going to add 1.8 kilo to bring it to the same weight as this because it overhydrates them. So we'll only be adding maybe one kilo of water to each one. So we got my hose here and I'm just gonna guesstimate how much water to put in each one. And I should probably take some stuff out, put it in the oven, see what the current moisture content is. But, you know, I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to uh, wing it. Give that away. So that's 4.2 kilo there now. So I've added 1.2 kg of water. Let's just wing this one as well. So there we have it. These bags are hydrated, ready to go. Now I'm going to get these into my sterilizer behind me, alongside these ones here, and get them sterilized. Now I know you don't want to sit here and watch a 24 hour live stream of my sterilizer running, so I've made it easy for you. These have been sterilized, and we have got one which is complete right here. Now, the first thing I noticed with this is it looks like a lot of the material in there has broken down and it's got a really deep brown color. And it's absolutely changed completely from that nice, um, light, woody color here. It's gone to like quite a dark soil type color. This one here was a pink oyster as well, which I um, broke up, put water in, and ran it through a cycle um, just last week. Um, I haven't inoculated this one um, for the purposes of just showing you guys what it looks like when it comes out. Um, I did um, over 
hydrate this bag slightly as well. So you see a little bit of water around the top, but that's okay. It's just a test bag. So if I reach in here and have a look at it, the material coming out is um, it's quite dark. It's lost that nice light woody colour you get. Now, I don't know if that's the wood breaking down, or if that's the mycelium, which is um, broken down under the heat, but it certainly um, visually changes quite dramatically. Don't know if you guys can see that very well. That's what it looks like there, compared to when you first put it in. Now, the last part is to get uh, these bags sterilised get them into my lab and get them incubated. Now I've saved some time on that as well. And I already did that two weeks ago. And this is what they look like right here. That is pink oyster substrate, which I've had two flushes from. I have rehydrated, smashed up, rehydrated, re-sterilized and inoculated with a Phoenix oyster. And you can see, the colonisation is really beautiful in there. You can still see the darker colours, um, the darker colour of the substrate coming through. But what I'm going to do now is get that into my fruiting chamber and see what sort of flush we get out of it. So here we are in my fruiting room. You can see these big flushes of pinks next to me and some um, Phoenix oyster right there, those are all going to the market tomorrow. I've got a spot here on the shelf next to all these um, phoenixes here where I get them tucked away into here Oops, sure that bag next to me. with my um, craft, crafty craft knife. With my trusty craft knife, I'm going to cut a wee hole in the front like I do with all my bags. And there we have it. We're going to see just how well these two fruit. This one right here is a good example of the phoenix I grow. Really nice, good size, uh, uniform mushrooms. If you guys need a good craft knife to use, I use a Tajima one. I think they're a Japanese brand. Um, I use these all the time, right? I don't even use knives. I just use um, craft knives for everything. So something really unfortunate happened and halfway through the experiment my humidifier here actually died. Now this has been going for a year and a half now without a problem and um, the, the 10 head uh, fog unit um, has stopped working. I changed the power supply to it, it's a 48 volt unit thinking it's possibly the power supply and that wasn't the case. And when I connect that up to the new mean rail power supply it trips it straight away. So I think there's an overload in that pack uh, there. So we've got a new one coming. We have had to go to my backup unit in here, my backup humidifier. And it's not as good as this. And on a really hot dry day like today, it can't actually keep the humidity up to an acceptable level in there. And so the results I got from this experiment are not as good as I think they would have been if this had been running. When I did the next spot of filming, I thought it was okay. Um, but the following two or three days after that, all the mushrooms in there really um, took a bit of a dive in quality. And that's simply because I just can't get the humidity up in this room enough to combat the hot, dry heat here at the moment. Run for your fucking life. So that is the result there, that one and that one. Now that's produced quite a lot of mushrooms. This is one on fresh substrate above it, which has probably produced slightly more and of a higher quality. But these ones are still pretty good. I've noticed the caps have turned out a little early and this one here seemed to look, want to produce one bigger one and then a smaller other few around it. Of note, some of my other bunches here, like uh, these ones here, um, the caps are all looking quite small. Now what's happened here is, during the Christmas and the New Year's break, um, I wasn't able to incubate these bags for as long as I needed. They ideally need another two, maybe three days incubation. And what happens when you cut the incubation time short for um, 
the um, Phoenix Oyster, it actually creates small caps and they turn up real fast. But that there is the Pink Oyster substrate, which I have rehydrated, I have sterilized it, introduced Phoenix Oyster to it, and it's got a pretty decent bunch of mushrooms on there. So that leaves me with one question. Are mushroom growers like me really using all the available nutrition in our substrate? Are we as mushroom growers really getting as much energy out of those blocks as we could be? Is there a lot more in there that when kept at a certain hydration can produce a whole lot more mushrooms? Perhaps? I don't really know what the total greatest biological efficiency of the oyster varieties I grow are, but to me it looks like it's potentially a lot higher than what I had previously thought. We may look for a method to grind these up, rehydrate and reuse. You have to weigh up the losses in uh, production quantity versus uh, how much it costs to actually reuse these blocks versus reusing uh, the pelletized ingredients.